Hey guys, my name is Chantelle. I just want to say welcome to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about major depressive disorder. But before I do that, I just want to let you know that I am not a professional. I'm just a person who has been diagnosed with a disorder and I have studied psychology for five years in college. And I am going back here at the end of August to uh, finish working on my bachelor degree. But I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the things that I've been diagnosed with and that I have personally experienced in life and just kind of share my experience with the disorder and how it affects me. Alrighty, so let's start off. Uh, I will start off with saying that um, major depressive disorder is the most commonly diagnosed mood disorder in the DSM-4-TR. Um, the criteria for being diagnosed with it is basically a presence of a major depressive episode. However, the episode cannot be better accounted for by a schizoaffective disorder or schizophrenia or something like that. Um, also, there cannot have been a manic episode, otherwise it doesn't count. Um, also, another fact that I got out of my textbook is that depression is more likely to occur with each episode, with 70% um, of patients that have a second episode will have a third, and 90% of patients that have a third episode will have a fourth. Um, this was, um, depression can be fatal. Up to 15% of those with major depressive disorder will pass away from suicide. And there can be a genetic factor with major depressive disorder with it occurring more commonly within families. Alright, so now that we know the criteria, the main criteria was that, you know, the, well, the first one was that you have to have a, the presence of a major depressive episode. So what we're going to do is go over that and what that basically is. And it starts off by saying that um, you five or more of these symptoms, they must be present within the same two-week period and they must represent a change from prior functioning. And at least one of the symptoms must be either a depressed mood or loss of interest or pleasure in doing activities. Alright, so, um, so th we'll start off with the symptoms. So symptom number one is depressed mood mostly every day and most of the day. Symptom number two is mostly diminished pleasure in almost all or even all activities nearly every day. A significant amount of weight loss when not dieting or attempting to lose weight or a significant amount of weight gain and a decrease or increase in appetite nearly every day. All right, number four is insomnia or hypersomnia. Number five is either psychomotor agitation or retardation almost every day. Because I wasn't sure what psychomotor agitation was, I did go ahead and look it up, and that is basically um, like tapping your toes, tapping your fingers, fast talking, like things like that. And psychomotor retardation is the slowing of physical or emotional reactions. All right, and symptom number six is fatigue or loss of energy almost daily. Symptom number seven is feelings of worthlessness or excessive inappropriate guilt, which could be delusional, like you may feel guilty for something that you didn't necessarily do. Um, symptom number eight is decreased ability to think or concentrate or indecisiveness almost every day. And symptom number nine is recurrent thoughts of death, not just the fear of death, or it could be recurrent suicidal ideation without specific plan or a suicide attempt or a specific plan to commit suicide. All right, um, the symptoms do not meet criteria for a mixed episode. So that means that um, 
basically what I, what it said before that it doesn't count if you've had like a manic episode to go along with it. It doesn't count as major depressive disorder in that case. Um, okay, the symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of function or living. Um, and the symptoms are not due to a direct physiological effect of a substance or a general me general medication. And last thing is that the symptoms are not better accounted for by the loss of a loved one or the symptoms persist for longer than two months. The symptoms are characterized by marked functional impairment, morbid preoccupation with worthlessness, suicidal ideation, psychotic symptoms, or psychomotor retardation. So that is a little bit about major depressive disorder and what it is and what some of the criteria that you would have to um, fall under in order to be diagnosed with a disorder. But like I said, a modern professional, if you feel like you have this disorder or any type of mental disorder, please, please go to a doctor. Please seek help. It is so important because you, you absolutely can get better. I know I say that all the time, but it's so true. And I just want people to know that. And it's, it's, it's really is important. Depression is very serious. Um, the symptoms can be very severe. They have been severe for me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. Um, I've had, I had a lot of fatigue when I, the first ever, um, depressive episode that I had was back when I was 18, when I was first diagnosed with the disorder and a trigger warning, but it did, unfortunately, you know, I did have a suicide attempt back then and it, it, you know, I got better. I actually did not have a, another episode for many years after that. I've had up to like five now. And I, I hope I, <laughs> reading this, it makes me feel like there's no hope for me to not have any more. I mean, just saying that it, you know, I mean, I guess since I've had five, I have a 90% chance of having more at this point. But, uh, hey, a 10% chance to not have another one is better than none, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, anyhow, um, definitely I, I experience a lot of um, fatigue lack of concentration like my best friend died at the very like before I dropped out of college back in 2000 well she passed away in 2013 I, I left college in 2014 not just because of that there were other things involved financial stuff and things like that but um yeah unfortunately I left I, I wish I would have stayed and finished but it just wasn't going to be possible possible for me at that time there were many other things involved I was a single parent at the time I was still a single parent but my youngest was only four I, the classes are way too hard I could not come home and study and focus on them with a four-year-old it, it was just too hard anyways um so it wasn't fully my depression but it was definitely part of it and it definitely made class a lot harder like it was a struggle to focus once I felt depressed I honestly couldn't I couldn't focus at all that was a big reason why I did leave as well because I did I didn't feel confident in myself that I could finish it um I do now we'll see I might change that after I start after I go back in August I'll let you know how it goes we'll see but um yeah so I I experienced a lot of a lot of those symptoms um with suicide attempts and the lack of concentration, the fatigue, the lack of interest. I mean, like just this year. It's hard though because like I went for like three months I felt like a zombie. But that was actually due to a medication. But I didn't know because I was already depressed. So it was hard to to realize that until, um, until I stopped the medication. You know, I feel a lot better now. But it's been a long road. And if you do decide or think that a medication is costing you that, make sure you talk to your doctor first. I talked to my doctor. He approved it for me. I stepped down. I didn't quit any of them cold turkey. I did it through my doctor. It is very important to do that because the medications can cause side effects. So be careful. Um, my thing with, you know being treated for depression was that I feel like and I felt like this overall like even from the beginning and actually just with me doing these videos and like researching these disorders over again like 
it makes me realize that, that plans really, and I'm sorry, not plans, but like, tr well, treatment, treatment, per se, is not, it's really not that individualized as it should be. I, I don't know. I just don't feel like it is. I feel like that, um, doctors are too quick to want to hand out, like, diagnosis. I don't know. Because when you actually get into reading about these diagnosed, these different disorders and studying them, it's like there's so many different like criteria for different disorders that sometimes I read some of these things and I'm like, I wonder if I even actually have this and not just this and this or whatever, you know. But I'm not a professional, so that's not for me to decide right now. But it doesn't hurt for me to research these disorders and and uh, be informed on them anyways. I don't know. Depression is very scary, guys. It is. It is. And you definitely need to get help for it. It's not going to... It's usually not something that's going to cure itself. Uh, medication and therapy definitely are a big, big help. But always talk to somebody. Don't let stuff... Don't let problems stew in your mind. Like, it's never a good thing. It really isn't. Like, it's good... It, Find somebody, and if you don't have somebody, then get a therapist. I mean, honestly, I have my family, but I don't have any, like, close, close friends that I can talk to about stuff. And sometimes it's better to have, like, a third party, like, just an outside party, like, looking in. Because a lot of times when you're talking to somebody about your problems, they're going to be biased. If, if they care for you, they're going to be biased towards you. So, you kind of want an out, outsider, out, in a, in a sense. Alright guys, sorry about that. Of course, as you would have it, my camera just loves to shut itself off for whatever reason. I tried doing some troubleshooting on it, but apparently I haven't fixed the problem. But I just kind of wanted to wrap this video up. I know I look a little bit different here. <laughs> I pulled my hair up and took my makeup off and I decided I'm going to go to the pool, but... I was like, you know what, let me just finish filming this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I was supposed to have filmed it yesterday. But, of course, procrastinated and did research yesterday instead of filming it. But here we are today. So, um, my, my main thing is I, I just want to say that please, please get help. If you, if you feel like you need it, please do. I promise you will not have to feel depressed forever. I promise that you, you can definitely get better. Nobody has to live like that. That's the cool thing about it, is that there is treatment. And I just want to say that while I have had like five episodes, now five major depressive episodes in my life, I do feel, and I'm fairly certain, I want to say like, I feel pretty like 90% sure that if I had stayed away from substances, like mind altering substances um i don't feel that i would have had like any more after because like i had said in previous videos that i, I got sober in 2008 and stayed sober for three years straight and and then i've explained what happened after that of course but i i feel like 90 percent sure that if i didn't use and that so that's why it's so important for me to stay clean because you know I I'm not the type of person to where I count like my sobriety days I don't do that because I did that before and it like destroyed me uh, when I messed it up so this time around I'm not counting them it's been at least a few months I know that but uh uh, that's about it. I, I'm kind of like a monthly kind of, you know, if I get, once I get a month in, I'm happy, another month I'm happy. I, I don't go day by day. I mean, day by day, yes, I take everything day by day, but I don't count. I, I don't know. Everybody's different though. Everybody, everybody's journey is different. So I think it's okay for me to do that in my journey. Um, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, share it if you think it'll help anybody. Um, subscribe if you want to see more i do plan to upload or at least to try to upload once a week so far i have done that i did miss one week but that's because i had carpal tunnel surgery so um my right hand was kind of out of commission so i yeah i was in too much pain to do it that week but yeah so hey i hope you guys have a great day i hope you have an awesome day and i just want to say um good luck on your journey i know that 
you can do this. We can all do this. We can all get better. So let's all do that. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.